Hello folks, welcome back. Alex here again. I'm finally home. Uh, I probably sound better. You can probably tell because I'm back with my own stuff. I'm very happy about that. And in this episode, we're just going to have a look at one of the ways that you can get really creative manipulating this piece of audio here. It's just a simple loop, and we're going to do it using our MIDI keyboard. But here's a clue. We're not going to splice it, or sorry, slice it to a multi-sampler or anything like that, okay? This is just a, a more of an exercise in outside-the-box kind of audio manipulation that you can really, as far as I know, only do inside Bitwig. Okay? All right. Let's see what I'm talking about. I like to think of Bitwig as uh, the modeling clay of audio workstations, because really it can be anything that you want it to be, which is the, the whole point of Bitwig, really. Of course, you can just leave it as the modeling clay house uh, that everybody makes, but then, you know, you would just have other DAWs like Ableton and Logic and stuff like that. And the whole point of us being inside a Bitwig is to really just shape it and mold it to the way we want it to perform. So let's have a listen to this little loop here that I dug up. I'm not really sure where it came from. It was inside my computer. Yeah, and it just basically does that over and over again. You can see by the title here that I just pulled it in from my computer. If you guys search that and you have it in there, then we all know that it probably just came from Bitwig <laughs> when we downloaded their uh, factory loops and stuff like that. Okay, so, well, if I wanted to play this, say this was a vocal even, or not even, pretend I wanted to display this out over my keyboard so that I could change the pitch of it throughout. Well, sure, we could go in and we can right click and slice it to the multi sample and create however many slices depending on, you know, what we want to do. There's videos on that. And that's a good way to go because that offers you some serious flexibility. But say we don't really feel like doing that this time around. Well, no problem. If I go here and say, say pitch is what I'm concerned about. Okay, I want to change the overall pitch as I play my keyboard. Well, let's just load up a pitch shifter here. Okay, and there it is. Of course, if you listen. Well, that's fun and well, but it's not tracking my keys right now. It's just, you know, you can tell obviously when I move that, uh, the pitch goes up and down. Well, there's a little trick we can do here. Let's throw on a key tracker. And I have found through experimentation that if we put this on relative, it's less dramatic, but more of what I wanted to hear. Okay, so now I'm going to use this, click the mod button, and bring this all the way up to 12. Okay, because 12 semitones is one octave, and that just seems appropriate, doesn't it? Okay, let's get it right perfect. There we go. All right, I'm going to turn that off. And now, if I choose the input as my VI-25, that's just the name of my keyboard. I got an Alesis VI-25 beside me here because it's small and cute. And let's hear what happens now. Oops. See, now as I touch different keys on my keyboard, uh, it's changing the pitch of this. Sorry, I forgot to arm the track beforehand, and that's probably why you got that. Let's have a listen again. Yeah, very cool. Well, we can go a little further than that. Let me shrink this up. Let's add on... Uh, a reverb okay let's scroll down here choose the reverb now how about every time well my keyboard has channel after touch and if you don't know what that is it's basically the harder I push on a key uh, it, it's it, it will affect some kind of parameter uh, more and more it's different from velocity because velocity is how hard or how fast you hit the note this is after I've hit the note and then I dig into my keyboard and push it a little bit further well my this keyboard happens to have channel after touch and it was one of the reasons why I even bought it in the first place and so let's make use of that here's the expressions okay and there in the expressions is one called pressure but we don't have to use this guy because it has four others that I'm probably not going to make use of. So let's delete that. 
okay now we could also choose MIDI and now when I bring up the MIDI settings look there's pressure pressure after touch same thing okay all right so I'm gonna turn this down and I think I'm gonna add a little distortion let's just see here do 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 distortion I'm gonna turn that all the way down I'm gonna bring this up a tiny bit some diffusion I'm just tinkering around with it you know uh, okay now I'm gonna click the mod button I'm gonna bring this up a good you know bunch of the way and bring this up just a tiny little bit so now in theory what will happen is as I push harder on the key that I've just played it'll bring up the reverb and a little bit of grittiness with it as well let's see if that's true <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. You could see how that could be creative. Well, that's not enough for me yet, I don't think. Let's throw in a let's throw on a delay. How does that sound? A delay too. And we'll just leave it the way it is, but I'm going to turn the mix all the way down as I always do. And maybe this time uh how about my how about my pitch wheel? All right, let's throw another MIDI in there open this up choose bend okay and now I'm gonna mod a whole bunch of delay in there so now theoretically as I move my pitch wheel up it'll add mix or it'll add delay to the signal let's have a listen very interesting okay well if you've done this and it's not working and you're moving your pitch wheel and it's you know it's not having any effect I'll tell you why click on your track header and turn off convert pitch bend okay this just screws it up see if I turn it on and then try it it doesn't do anything I'm, I'm modulating it and it's not doing anything so I'll just turn that sucker off and that'll work again okay pretty cool so now we have all these interesting kind of uh, ways that we can play around with it but there's one fundamental problem if you don't already know what I'm talking about but like say I want to record some of that in because it's fun to play with and maybe that's cool for live or whatever but um, maybe I want to record that in so the sample has been changed that way well okay sure you're thinking uh, you know click click the global record button and uh, let's do it Interesting. Everything seems to be working. Well, that seemed to have worked. Let's listen. Nothing. He's got some weird weirdness. So that's no good, right? Okay, well, I know what you're thinking. Maybe, uh, maybe it's that I have to click over. I don't know. Let's, let's give it a whirl. Let's even turn that off. I don't think that worked either folks listen nothing okay well that's a bit of an issue isn't it because I like the sound of what I was doing there let's undo that well not to fret let's go here let's press command T and make an instrument track okay now on this instrument track we're gonna first of all turn off convert pitch bend because that'll just screw it up choose the input VI 25 also remember you could just use your uh, computer keyboard if you want you just got to hit caps lock to get that and uh, and we're gonna choose the output to do tracks and this EM cosmic sitar which is just that right okay and all ooh, I should have mentioned you got to convert this to a hybrid track okay it won't work unless it's a hybrid track so don't forget to do that um, so now in theory we're recording off this channel with my VI 25 it's sending that information over to this guy and now on this guy I'm gonna not choose an input okay let's see what happens now <laughs> Well, everything seems to be working. Can I record? 
That's the question here. Let's see. Sounds like I can. Now, if I play it back, does it work? Yes, it does. Okay, so not too hard of a technique, really. I mean, would you? Are you going to do this instead of converting that to a multi-sample? Maybe, maybe not. It's an interesting way. I mean, of course, you can go in and you can get super crazy with all of this stuff here, and uh, you can add in whatever effects you want, and you can just, you know, figure out what what do you want a key track, uh, what do you want to use assign your pressure to, your bend to, and a whole host of other things, right? Because you still you still have expressions and then there you go you got your timbre and uh your velocity your pressure and your relative there and i mean you've got all kinds of stuff in there that you can play with and you can assign it to a midi keyboard which is super cool so now you can just in real time as you're listening to this uh jam out with your track and then use your keyboard to follow the key of the song which is pretty interesting if you ask me um again you could do that all this stuff inside a multi-sampler but um, uh, maybe not so much, right? Because now you're changing stuff up pretty hardcore. Uh, well, anyway, I hope that did something for you. I hope that kind of stretched your brain, expanded your horizons a little tiny bit because that's all I ever want in the world for you folks. And if you liked it, click like. If you'd like to subscribe, go right ahead. I'd love that. And if you have any comments or questions, anything to add to it, definitely pop that down there, down below. See, I'm making an arrow with my mouse right now. It's just below there. Okay? All right, folks. Until next time, have a good one. Peace.